Yeah, but it's actually starting to let up out there. Well, I hope so. You know, Wang's been in the kitchen. He's been having a fit. This tree limb blew in the window, and he's been cleaning it up ever since. <sighs> well, he's lucky he didn't have any more damage. You know, last night is possibly one of the worst storms I've ever seen for this time of year. Yeah, I know. Hey, want some coffee? <sighs> yeah, I would like some. Yeah. Where were you? When? Last night. I was kind of worried about you. I tried calling your apartment, but there wasn't any answer. Hey, did you hear about the good news about Ruby? No, what? Well, it looks like she's uh, found herself a little backer for the kook. Who? Lurleen Harper. Oh, I told her to leave poor Lurleen alone. Well, she moved out to the Marshall Ranch, packed up Lurleen, and moved her right into Billy Joe's apartment. Looks like she's got Lurleen right where she Thank wants her. Thank you, I can't believe that uh, Kate would let her get away with it. What happened to your face? Nothing. Don't tell me nothing. You got some bruises there, honey. What happened? It's nothing, Ricky. I hope you choke. For your mother's sake, you better hope I don't. I'm gonna slap a lawsuit on her when I get out of here. Ashley, you know as well as I do, this has nothing to do with my mother. It's not her fault. It's an act of God. Oh! I didn't know he was in the elevator business. You can't hold the owner of a building responsible for a power failure. Oh, yes, I can. I have been in here for 13 hours. And no one has even made an attempt to rescue me. No one knows we're here. Obviously. And your mother's too cheap to have security guards or, or, or mechanics on duty at night. Look, honey, no one is forcing you to stay here. You can always move out, you know. How? As far as I know, this elevator hasn't moved all night. I'm getting sick and tired of hearing you complain. Oh, really? Do us all a favor. Why don't you leave? There's a yellow rose. Shut up! Right if you do that one more time, I'm gonna kill you, TJ. Well, if you don't like the yellow rose of Texas, I do a real great rendition of On the Streets of Laredo. Shut up! Well, we can make a trio. Well, it's about time. Hey, is there anybody in there? Yeah. Hey, yeah, we're stuck in the elevator! Help! Help! I think there's somebody in there. Get us out! Hold on, folks. At last! <sighs> Oh. 13 hours and 11 minutes. It seems more like 40 days and 40 nights. You know what? Your perfume really stinks. No, 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 no. Please, lie still. I just want to see if I can wipe some of this perspiration off of you. I don't want you to catch a chill. Oh. oh. I'm sorry, did I hurt you? Are you all right? I'm so sorry that I shot at you, but through the door, I was just so frightened. I'm glad you were such, such a bad shot. <laughs> no, d don't. Whoever you are, please just hold on. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? Kinsey. The first part of Texas is brought to you by the first powder detergent with a full-strength fabric softener built right in. Bold 3. 
cleans, softens, controls static. Bold 3. I came in, you were both passed out cold. Oh, I feel terrible. My leg and my head. Well, it comes with the territory, honey. That's the price you pay. Oh, I've forgotten it could be this bad. Well, I used to remember my granddaddy when he was having a bad day. But I never did. Oh, well, there's a first time for everything. Well, I'm not going to drink anymore. <laughs> I heard that before. Ruby! Will you just shut up and get the girl some aspirin? Oh, all right. But not until you guys tell me what went on. Oh, nothing went on, Ruby. Nothing at all. All right, now I really want to know what went on here. Oh, boy, I had such a terrible night last night. The electricity was out for hours. Have you ever tried to change a diaper by candlelight? Can't say as I have. Well, listen, listen to me. It's no fun. I only hope the storm isn't going to stop customers from coming in. Just let me worry about that, Nick. I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything. I guess I'm just still upset about last night. Did you get caught in the storm? No, I, uh, I got stood up for dinner. By Elliot? Well, I wound up with Elliot, but, uh, I was supposed to be having dinner with T.J. Canfield. Oh. What happened? Well, I, I waited at the top of the World Club. He never showed up. He didn't even call. He still hasn't. Oh, that's terrible. How rude. I think so, too. But I'm not going to spend any more time worrying about it. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, have you been working on your sketches, Nita? Yeah. You know, I think if you keep at it that we should put some of your designs into production. Oh, they're not real designs. They're just dreams, drawings on paper. Yeah, well, dreams have a way of working out, you know? You know, I was also thinking that I think we should come up with a name for your creations. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Well, why not? Every line of clothes has a name. I just feel so... Oh, it would be kind of neat, though. Having my own design sold here. That's it. What? Why don't we simply call them Nita's? I've been so glad to get out of a place in my whole life. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. It's been a long night. You girls have worn me out. You're gross. Thank you. I didn't know you were so sensitive, Rena. I thought that you were a Texas girl. Forget it, TJ. Okay. I gotta admit, though, this has been an interesting experience. Oh, a fantastic experience if you're into torture. First thing, I'd rather spend six weeks on the Sahara with a camel. Ladies. Ah, now we're moving. I'll never get on an elevator with you two again. 
If you remember, I didn't want to get on this one with you to begin with. So why did you? Hey, 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 hey. Now remember what I told you, you know? When people are thrown together in a disaster like this, it makes friends for life out of strangers. <laughs> Fortunately, you two are not strangers. Hey, are, are you folks okay? Well, I'm fine now that I'm out of that Iron Maiden. What took you so long? Well, he did the best job he could, Ashley. So now you're going to start defending. Ashley, Rita, come on, come on. Let's just forget it, huh? We've been under a lot of strain. Yeah, I'm going home. Uh, tell your mama she's going to be hearing from me. Well, thanks a lot, old buddy. As I walked out in the street for the rain, I walked out. to have to get the gardener out here the first thing tomorrow. That storm made a mess of everything. The wind uh, split that uh, cottonwood up the street. Everything was blocked off when I came in last night. You like some more coffee, honey? No, oh, I'm fine. Stryker watching the phone is not going to make it ring. Where is she? I don't know, but she's a big girl. She can take care of herself. Well, under normal circumstances, yes, but after last night, you don't think she's in an accident, do you? No, no. If she had been, we would have heard by now. Well, I suspect that she met a friend, and when the weather turned bad, she decided to stay where she was. Wouldn't you have called? Not necessarily. I think she's with a man. Possible? I hope not. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. I'll tell you one thing, she better not be with T.J. No, <laughs> Rena's not very fond of T.J. Neither am I. I can't figure that young man out. He had our trust, he had a good job. I don't know what he wanted. Apparently, he wanted a partnership in your law firm. Or the presidency of World Oil. Never showed that kind of ambition before. How come now, all of a sudden? A man can change, Stryker. It's a sign of maturity. Not a sign of maturity going over to Marshall Oil. I'm not so sure about that. At Marshall Oil, he'll be his own man. He could have been his own man at World Oil. Could he? The boy's like a son to me. He betrayed me, and I don't like it, and I don't understand it. I just... I just don't understand it. I'm sorry, I frightened you. I just, when you passed out, I thought you were... I understand. I, I understand. I, I'm just not equipped to... It's all right. Where is this place, anyway? You're, uh... You're on the Marshall Ranch. It's uh, not too far out of Houston. Well, that makes sense. On the survey map that I was using, I figured I must have walked a couple of miles. Are we the only ones here? Uh, for the moment, the, uh, the ranch hands are down at the bunkhouse, and my son and his grandmother were caught in the storm. It must have been. What time is it? It's early. The storm's all over. What, what happened? I mean... You mean, how did I get here? Yes. Well, I was... Working out in the hills about 10 miles from here. Working on what? The survey. Uh, it was something private. Storm blew up and uh, I jumped into the Jeep and headed back in over that old cattle road. Nobody even uses that road anymore. I know. And nobody's going to be using it again, at least not for a long time. <laughs> so uh, what happened? Well, you know that old wooden bridge over the arroyo? You mean the dry wash? Yeah. Well, the jeep was in the middle of that, and flash flood just shot up from nowhere. And the whole structure just collapsed like a deck of cards. And the jeep and me with it. That's a, 
Good 20-foot drop. At least. Anyway, the water broke the fall. The jeep landed upside down. and I got free. The current carried me down a ways. And finally, it just threw me up in a dry spot and was covered in pine scrub. I must have passed out for a while. So, how did you get here? Well, I walked, uh, hobbled, crawled. And I saw that light on in your stable before you turned it out. Oh, I tell you, you scared me half to death. I'm sorry I wasn't all that coherent at the time. You know, I'd call a doctor, but uh, the lines have been down since last night. Well, I guess I'll just have to make do with my own special angel of mercy. Uh, an angel of mercy shot at you. <laughs> well, she missed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you all right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just as long as you don't go away. No, oh, I, I won't. I promise I'll stay right here. Good. Good. Elena. Will you stop getting worked up over nothing? I can see the bruises on your face. Now, don't tell me it was nothing. Well, that's exactly what they are. They're nothing. Where did you get them? I fell. Last night in the rain, it was slippery. How did you fall? Look, Ricky, you know, I'm embarrassed enough as it is that I was so clumsy. Now, are you going to really force me to tell you this whole story? Well, I wish you would. Oh, okay. Look, I was going back to my car, you know, when it was raining, and there was this huge, huge puddle, and I tried to jump over it, and I tripped. <laughs> and you fell in the street? Yes. And that's how you got those bruises on your face? Well, I... Come on, Elena. I fell against the car, Ricky. And it reached out and smacked you on, huh? Come on, Ricky, what are you trying to prove? Elena, you got the kind of bruises that you get when somebody hits you. You've been roughed up. I want to know who did it. You know, I think that you've been a cop a little bit too long. I think your imagination is running away with you. It was Bo Baker, wasn't it? No, I told you what happened. Why? Because it was slippery and I... Why are you protecting him? Why? Why are you so sure it's Bo? Because Bo is the only one around here who would do something like that. Look, even if it was Bo, and I'm not saying it was... I can handle him. Yeah, I can see that. I warned you about him. Ricky, I fell. I slipped and I fell. Bo Baker did it, didn't he? Ricky, you stay out of there. I'm going to find Bo Baker, and when I do, he's going to be sorry he ever laid eyes on you, girl. Ricky! All right, I'm not leaving for the coop until you tell me exactly what went on between you two last night. Nothing went on, Ruby. Use your head. Now, I came in here last night, soaked and wet, and I made myself some toddy to fight off a cold, and Laureline said she'd join me with one. That's right, and, and then we had a conversation, a very nice conversation. Very nice. And a few more toddies. A few? Yeah, well, that was a mistake. But we don't have colds this morning, and, and I had fun talking to Billy Joe. You have a very nice brother, Ruby. Honey, I just want to apologize, Lurleen, for letting you get drunk. I, I just didn't think. I'm sorry. It wasn't your fault, Billy Joe. I was the one that did all the drinking. Oh, no, oh. Oh, no, you take it easy. Oh. You take her easy. It looks like we've both got a real bad case in the morning afters, huh? Well, it's not going to happen again, because there's going to be no more drinking as long as Lurleen is in this house. Well, you don't have to worry about that. She's going to be all right, Ruby. All she needs is a little breakfast, that's all. Maybe. But I think what she needs is her own apartment. I think we've got to find you your own place. It's going to be real nice. We've got to find it real soon. Oh, that would be wonderful, Ruby. I've always wanted to place my own. <laughs> Of course, I've never lived in a city before. It'd be a little scary. Oh, there's nothing to be scared of? Well, of course not for you, Ruby. I mean, you're used to living on your own, but Lorleen here's different. I mean, you know, Houston's kind of a tough place. A lot of grabbers out there. And Lorleen here, well, you know, she doesn't have the kind of experience that you have. I know that, Billy Joe, and that's why I'm going to take care of her. Well, good. Look at you work, darling, because old Billy Joe's going to look out for you, too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I can't get over this. Just a week ago, I, I thought I was going to be so lonely when my granddaddy died. 
And now I got friends. Two wonderful friends who worry about me and fuss over me. We're not fussing over you, honey. We just want to make sure you're real safe and happy while you're here in Houston. <laughs> so don't you worry about anything, because I'm just going to take care of you. Oh, honey. I know you're disappointed in TJ, but there's no point in bearing a grudge. I know, I can't help it. Stryker, one vindictive person in this family is just about all I can handle, so will you please try to forget TJ? And as far as Rena is concerned, I'm sure she has a perfectly good reason for not coming home last night. Or not calling. She better have. Stryker, you've got to stop thinking of Rena as a little girl. Well, she is my little girl. Hi. Good morning, sweetheart. Hello, Mom. Hmm. Where have you been? In an elevator. Elevator? I spent the whole night stuck in an elevator in one of your buildings, Mama. Oh, honey, how awful. Were you alone? No. I was with TJ and Ashley. What? All night? All night. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't like to see that. Oh, Daddy, oh. it was ghastly. Oh, oh, I'm sure it was. Mama, you've got to do something about uh, the maintenance of that building. I swear, if I had spent another five minutes in that elevator, I, I would have killed him. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing there in the first place? I was over at Marshall Oil. Oh? Why? Gloating. I've really fixed Justin this time, Daddy. <sighs> Rena, you promised. Anxious to find Bo. I told you to get rid of that guy and you wouldn't listen. No, and I still won't. I told you before, this is a free country. I've got a right to manage anybody I want. Not a piece of scum like Bo. Save your breath, Ricky. Look, you got a responsibility to me and Billy Joe. Bo Baker is a deadbeat. He's going to bring you down, Ruby, and he just might bring us along with you. You know, you're awful quick to pass judgment. What do you really know about Bo, anyway? I know he likes to beat up on girls. What are you talking about? Elena. Did you see what your client did to her last night? Bo would never raise his hand against a woman. You better think again, Ruby. I saw the bruises on her face, and I know they're Bo's work. Who told you, Elena? You're way out of line, Ricky. Look, Elena's out to get me, and she'll say anything that comes into her head if she thinks it's going to cause me trouble. Elena didn't tell me anything. As a matter of fact, she claims that she fell in the rain. Well, then why don't you believe her? Why do you have this overwhelming dislike for Bo? It's a little more than an overwhelming dislike. As a matter of fact, if I get my hands on him, I'm going to kill him. All right. So you're going to do this big macho number on Bo. So what's that going to prove? It's going to prove that nobody hits my sister and gets away with it. Look, Ricky, this whole thing is silly, and you're going to end up causing us a lot of trouble. I think Bo Baker's already done that, don't you? Well, what do you think Vicki Bellman's going to say if you get arrested for punching out I Bo? don't care about Vicki Bellman. Well, you should. She cares about you. She cares about what kind of image you're going to project. Hey, Ruby, Ricky. Glad to see you two weathered the storm, all right. the next part of Texas. That's now the next part of Texas. Are you sure what you did to Justin was business and not personal? Absolutely. I beat him fair and square. Well, I hope so. But I'll have to get the story later. I have an appointment this morning with Mr. Pursley from the Austin affiliate. See you later, honey. And, sweetheart, I'll have Beth fix you some breakfast. You've got to be starved. Oh, I'm so hungry I could eat the furniture in this place. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Tell me what
what you've done. <clears throat> well, you know that Justin made a deal to buy the A-side chain of filling stations, right? Yes, that was... that was already closed. But it wasn't. You see, Justin's deal didn't provide any money for him to pay off the station franchise owners. So, the station franchise owners decided to meet in Dallas, and they filed an injunction to close the sale. I see, and because World Oil was bidding you up to Dallas to join in the injunction. Precisely. Well, what happened? Well, Judge Warnick, he granted the injunction, and now Justin has to come up with a whole bunch of money, which he doesn't have, or lose the stations. That's got him, honey. You bet it does. Daddy, Justin is finished. He can't survive without those stations. You know what else it means? What? It means that T.J. goes down right with him. I can't think of anyone who deserves that more than he does. I am proud of you, honey. You handle this like a real pro. I am a real pro. I'm my daddy's girl. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly are that. You certainly are. <laughs> Let's get you some breakfast. Yep. Pretty good. Oh, but the no, the just sketches. Yes, but all clothes start out as sketches, Nita. Mm. I have a feeling that Nita's are going to be very real very soon. Dream on, Ms. Marshall. <laughs> Ms. Marshall. Yeah. Oh. Now before you drag out the tar and the feathers, let me explain. Explain? I don't think there's anything to explain. We had a date at the top of the World Club. I was there. You weren't. I think that speaks for itself. Well, I was tied up. Well, that's fine. That happens. But you might have had the courtesy to call. No, I couldn't. Why not? Because there wasn't a telephone. This is the 20th century, TJ. There is always a telephone. Well, the one in the elevator didn't work. In the elevator? I was stuck in an elevator. For 24 hours? No, for 13 hours and 29 minutes, to be precise. Oh. Oh, that's very clever. Is that really the best you can do? Yep. Well, that is the worst excuse I have ever heard. <laughs> well, it's the truth. Well, then you better trot right out there and find another one, because that is a bunch of junk. Hey, you two. You died. Now, nobody yet. Well, maybe you guys ought to lighten up, because in case you haven't noticed it, the storm's over. Last night was a big mistake, Bo. Last night? Next time you're looking for a sparring partner, why don't you pick on somebody your own size, like me? Well, I'm finding this all real interesting, but I'm not exactly a mind reader. What's he talking about? I'm talking about my sister. Your sister, Elena? Nice girl, good singer, too. I told you to stay away from her. Well, maybe you're talking to the wrong person. It seems to me you ought to say that to Elena. She seems to like my company. You hit her, didn't you? What? <sighs> I saw the bruises, Bo. What's the matter? You like hitting women? Hey, wait a minute, buddy. I don't know what the devil that sister of yours told you, but you got it all backwards. Bo, just call it. You know, that little lady of yours is not exactly a lady dog either. She knows what she wants. <laughs> Otherwise, how could she stand with that killer all that time? Oh. Yeah, I mean, if a man like that can't keep her off, what chance do I have? <laughs> <laughs> succumbs to Steve's charms and is torn between two lovers. Stephen Frame comes to Bay City. Wonderful. We get married as we plan, when we plan, or we never marry. This week on Another World. You see that cottonwood up the street? How could I miss it? Yeah, you got a little damage here, too, yourself. Yeah. 
Just like it when Rena came into my office for that plan. It was so well thought out that all I could do was simply approve it. I'm quite proud of her, Grant. Well, you ought to be. So I guess there's something else we have to talk about. It's T.J. You know, I really wasn't surprised at his move, but it sure made me mad. Made me mad, too. I should have known something was up when he asked for a partnership. I've been too complacent about T.J. Nothing we do now. He's made his bed with Justin. He's going to have to sleep in it. Well, especially now that Rena's pulled that coup. T.J. is like a son to me. Yeah, I placed my trust in him, too. Well, I guess it proves the old adage, doesn't it, Stryker? You never stop learning about human nature. Hey! Oh. Hey, you don't look so good this morning. I've had better days. Oh, what's the matter? Your new living situation getting to you? No. Well, where are your roommates, anyway? They're out. Well, maybe all the little pantyhose hanging in the showers getting to you and driving you to drink. Look, <laughs> look, Lena, I'm just trying to help Ruby out by taking Lorlene in on a temporary basis. That's all. Are you sure it's temporary? Of course. Of course, I'm sure. Lorlene's out looking at apartments right now. Look, why don't you just stay off my case, okay? I'm not on your case, Billy Joe. I'm on Ruby's. That's a big mistake. And if you keep messing around with Bo, you're going to wind up in a lot of trouble. Well, I don't think so. I think when I find out the answer to some of my questions, it's Bo and Ruby that are going to be in trouble. I'm warning you, Lena. Stay away from Bo. Are you trying to protect him? Of course not. It's you I'm worried about. You know something about him you're not telling me? <sighs> Look. Look, I don't feel too good right now, Lena. And you're just making it all worse. I'm just trying to get the answers to some simple questions. What's the point of all this? I mean, what do you hope to accomplish by fooling around with Bo? Now, just forget it, Lena. Stay out of Bo's life and forget the whole thing. You do know something about him, and you're hiding it, aren't you? Hello, Bo. Oh, it's my darling. It is. And go on this way. Come on, Bo, wake up. Come on. Open your eyes. Oh! Oh, Bo? I'm hurt. You okay? Get that thing away from me. I warned you not to mess with Ricky, Bo. Shut up. Dicker's got the brains of a jackass. Kicks like one, two. What's the damage? You look terrible, and it serves you right. Careful what you say. You brought this whole thing on yourself, you know, Bo. I warned you not to come on to Elena. I didn't come on to Elena. She came on to me. Oh, and I wonder why she did that. I suppose it was the same reason you did, Duncan. Why did you have to ruffle up? Because the little brat is a tease. She led me on, and then at the last minute changed her mind. That's great, Bo. Now we're in high school. I well, don't start. You're a grown man, Bo. You got exactly what you deserve. <sighs> yeah, well, you haven't heard the end of this. Oh. Well, I hope for your sake I have. Because if you try another stunt like that, Ricky Decker's gonna come and kill you. Somebody's gonna get killed, all right, but it ain't gonna be me. Forget it, Bo. If you go after Ricky, he's gonna break every bone in your body. <sighs> no, he's not fucking. Because the next time I go after Ricky Decker, it's not going to be with my fists. Oh, I heard all over. What do you mean, it's not going to be with your fists? I got ways. Oh, don't do anything stupid. It isn't worth it. I'll take care of Ricky Decker. Oh, it's too dangerous. Not the way I'm going to handle it. Oh, you are crazy. Yeah, you better start finding yourself another meal ticket real quick. Hey, this pumpkin. Ricky Decker is as good as dead. Well, looking better after your nap. Oh, ribs are still a little sore. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm gonna make it, okay? It's good. As soon as the lines come back out, I'll, uh, call the doctor pretty soon. You've got a man out in this neighborhood? Mm-hmm. 
Doc Williams from Marshall Village. He's kind of an old country doctor, but he certainly is a whiz when it comes to rolling tape and a couple of splints. <laughs> you know, I think it's about time that we introduced ourselves. This battered specimen that you dragged it out of the rain is named Miles Rehnquist. Well, it's nice to meet you, Miles <laughs> Rehnquist. I'm Ginny, Ginny Connor. Ginny. Ginny, I like that. That suits you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, come here. Let me take a look at this. Wait a second. Now tell me where it hurts, okay? Here. Here. Over here. Oh. Right there, it feels just fine. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. I... Have I embarrassed you? No. Good, because I wouldn't want to do that. I'm just a very tired and very grateful man to have his own special angel. any brandy in the house? Well, could I have some? Let me ease the pain a little. Uh, oh, of course. I'm sorry. I should have thought of that myself. Let me get some. Why don't you pour one for yourself? Well, I hate to drink alone. Well, I guess it's really not like drinking in the morning. We have been up all night. Okay, I'll join you. You know, Miles, you really did give me quite a scare when you were pounding and scratching at that door. Well, how do you think I felt when you cut loose with that gun? <laughs> <laughs> Here's to more stormy nights. here until I can make you really believe that I was stuck in an elevator why didn't you tell me that your uh, canary died or you uh, were kidnapped by pirates would you believe that no but I might get a laugh out of it I might what? get a laugh out of the truth why was it a funny elevator no but it was a full one I wasn't alone oh so who else were you sharing an elevator with Ashley Marshall and Rena Decker. You're kidding. Unfortunately not. It was like spending the night at the OK Corral. That is really the truth, TJ. Then I think you're lucky to be alive. I'm not exactly sure I am. How did you uh, manage to keep the peace? I sang. You sang? Whenever I felt that we were on the verge of war, I went into a flawless rendition of the Yellow Rose of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked pretty well. No, they got so annoyed at me that they forgot about each other. Well, poor man. <laughs> Look, that's not the half of it. About uh, 3 a.m., I finally persuaded them into trying to get some sleep. And? Well, one of them snores. Who? I'm not sure, but I think it's Rena. <laughs> May I make this up to you? I promise I will stay away from elevators and I will be on time for dinner. Where will we go? Oh, I don't care, as long as it's on the ground floor. I don't know. Getting stuck in an elevator with me might not be so bad. What do you think? Sorry. No elevators. Set a date? I'll get cleaned up and everything. You have one more chance, Mr. Canfield. Better make it good. Yes? Karen, I don't think I know any Mr. Shaw. All right. Send him in.
Come in. This is Marshall. Yes. I'm uh, Howard Shaw. I'm a, an attorney here at Houston. Yes. Uh, nice to meet you. How can I help you, Mr. Shaw? Well, uh, do you know uh, Oliver Farnsworth? Well, of course I do. He's my aunt's attorney, my Aunt Hildy in Savannah. Uh, would you like to sit down? Mr. Mr. Shaw, what is it that Mr. Farnsworth wants you to tell me? I have bad news, Mrs. Marshall. Your Aunt Hildy is dead. Stay tuned. Texas will be right back. passed on yesterday. She was vacationing on the French Riviera. Yes, she was, um, she was in St. Tropez. The funeral arrangements have been taken care of. Her, her good friend, Iris Wheeler, is taking care of everything. Yes, Iris. Oh, she left New York immediately. She will see to it that your aunt's service is handled with dignity. Oh. Oh. I can't believe it. My, uh, Aunt Hildy is so, uh... I can't believe that she's gone. I'm afraid she is. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry, my dear. Aunt Hilda, you can't be gone. Well, you, you must bear up under this. I know it's terribly difficult for you. I need you. I'm so you. sorry. I'm so sorry to have had to bring you the news. of Texas was brought to you by Lemon Fresh Joy. Joy cleans clear down to the shine. So your everyday dishes don't look everyday. Tomorrow night on Real People, you'll discover the truth about Lightning Man. Then on The Facts of Life, Joe's real-life boyfriend meets her classroom husband. Right after that on Love, Sydney, Patty is used in Sydney's ad campaign, and when the ad agency fires him, Sydney tells them off. Later on Quincy, when a young boy witnesses a murder, he becomes the killer's next target tomorrow. Saturday night, it's a new night for Harper Valley and Lewis and Clark. Two great comedies, Saturday on NBC. Texas.